Good morning everybody. So um, today the video is going to be on balancing the propeller. Um, I get a lot of questions about that so I thought I'd make this video and just kind of show you guys how it works. This prop is actually, it was actually pretty close to being perfectly balanced from the beginning. Um, they're usually not this good but um, this one was pretty on point so a lot of what you're gonna see is mostly just hand sanding this prop also gets stained so I will do most of the balancing by hand sanding because it gives me two benefits of balancing it and of course making it super smooth for my stain so I don't have any swirl marks or things like that so what I'm doing here is just doing a, um, a quick I've already kind of looked at what sides are my heavy sides, so I'm going and I'm taking out any places that um, are a little rough. So that spot that I hit just there was a spot that I had hit with the drum sander and I had to go back and kind of smooth that piece out. It'll give me, you know, really, really um, bad swirl marks there. So I hit that one really hard and your hub right through there it carries a lot of swirls too kind of as your grain changes right there you're kind of going almost almost kind of from your in grain to your smooth grain and that will hold swirls right in there um they're a little bit more stubborn to get out than the swirls that you see on the blade so i spend a lot of time working on that hub right in there to get all the swirl marks out of it and I basically just go over it just just meticulously over every single piece of it and there's a lot of also when I hand sand it like that I get to feel any ripples or little bumps that I missed with the sander so it's super beneficial in the fine-tuning of it in the final sandings to hand sand it all down just to give it that extra quality control there at the end and this video so the video took I think when I filmed it and then I put it all into the editor it said it was like a 35 minute video or something like that so that's that's the time it took me to balance the whole thing was like 35 minutes. It normally is, like I said, normally they're a little bit more out of balance than this one, but um, this one went really well, so it only took me 30 minutes as opposed to what would normally be an hour or two. So this is our balancing stand, and we just statically balance them. And I checked for level on the stand before I put it on there but I just put it on there and then I just check and see which blade is heavy and it's really as simple as that the heavy blade gets sanded so I balance them horizontally like you see here and I go back and I balance them vertically also and so I'm a little bit out of balance vertically and horizontally on this one. Then you always check with your heavy blade upright or your heavy side of your hub upright. That way, um, if you checked it with the heavy side down, it would kind of pull it down and not give you an accurate measurement. So you always measure with your heavy side up. And it's just ever so slightly off and I have a little bushing that's a one inch hole and then the shaft on the balancer is three quarters of an inch so there's a little bushing there that I put in to give it um, a little bushing to give it what it needs there so right there I am sanding it with a um, the Dyna braid orbital sander and I think I have 180. I have 180 grit sandpaper on that. So I'm really not taking off 
very much at all. And I'm, what I, when I looked at that, I saw like this little tiny ridge here in the transition. So I really looked at taking that little ridge out and by sanding right there in that space, I'm actually working on my vertical and horizontal. So if I only had vertical balance, I would stay more directly on the outside of the hub and not go towards one blade or the other. But since I'm trying to correct a balance in two different directions, then I wanna hit that little pocket right there where I'm sanding on the heavy blade and I'm sanding on the heavy side of the hub. So I kind of think about cutting my prop into four quadrants. Like if I cut it in half long ways and sideways, and then I need to sand in that quadrant um, to bring it back into alignment. And this is a five inch sander and it is so, so, so handy for that blend. This, is, this prop is going on a nine cylinder Werner engine and that's a, a radial engine. They're relatively new, but they're gorgeous, gorgeous engines. And this is a three and three quarter hub thickness for the hub. That's a little bit thicker than I normally do. Most of my props for my like homings and my continentals are gonna have a three inch hub thickness, but the company burner wanted a three and three quarter hub thickness on theirs and it does not need it for the pitch because i think this only has a 37 inch pitch so it doesn't need the hub thickness for pitch um i think they want it for strength and this prop if i remember right is 85 inches i think that's just off the top of my head so don't hold me to that <laughs> So after I look at it, I am still just a little bit heavy on my hub and just a little bit heavy on my blade. The hub was just like so almost perfect. And that's just kind of the process. I balance, I sand, I balance, I sand, I balance, I sand. For just as long as it takes and at this point the hub was so close I really didn't need to go back to the orbital sander it was all stuff that could be taken um, hand sanding and the sandpaper that I use for that um, I think I'm at 100 or 120 grit on that And I say 100 or 120, but it's also a piece of sandpaper that I've used. You know, anybody who does forward working knows that they have all these little pieces of sandpaper <laughs> that they have. Like this one's used and this one's used just the right amount. And then this one's brand new in. So you find your, what piece of scrap has the exact perfect grit and feel that you're looking for. So that's what I'm doing here. It is a slightly used 100 to 120 grit piece of sandpaper. And when I balance a blade, um, when it's just the blade, I try to take all the material off the back of the blade. I really don't want to change the airfoil much at all. So I'll try to take all the material that needs to come off to make it balanced off of the back side of the blade. And I try to make sure that I do it so that I don't change the pitch. The, those, the things that you're looking for is when you balance, you look for number one, any defects that you can smooth out that'll help your balance. Then you look for if you don't have any defects or anything like that that you need to take out. Then you go back and you just start taking it very evenly off the back of the prop. And at this point, even just a little bit of dust can make that um, off balance. So now I'm to the point where every time I have to blow it off with the air hose and get all the sawdust off. And I also make sure that I have like no wind. So it's a beautiful day outside, but I keep all my doors shut because I don't want any wind. 
I turn all my heaters off or the fans off depending on what time of the year it is so there is no wind no movement of air at all because just the tiniest bit can give you a false reading on that and actually what I've done here is I actually went too far so even just that little bit of hand sanding took my blades off balance <laughs> and sometimes that happens this one was very very touchy so I actually did that a couple times just over sanded it just by hand sanding it just too much and had to go back and resand the other blade just super frustrating but at the same time it's nice that you're so close <laughs> so it's kind of a double-edged sword so I needed a little bit of a gauge here and just to give you an idea of I took post-it notes and put on it to gauge how much material I needed to take off so one post-it and I think that was maybe two post-it notes wasn't enough And three post-it notes wasn't enough and four post-it notes was just right so I need to take the weight of four post-it notes off that other blade And I like to go back so when I sand it for um, like my final sanding with the orbital I tend to stay away from that um, leading edge of the airfoil side because you you know that just cuts so quickly on on a rounded edge like that so I generally stay away from that a little bit and then since this one was getting stained it was important to really get back there and smooth that out so that was a good place to take a tiny bit of weight off was to go back in for that leading edge on the airfoil side and make sure that I had no swirls there. So you can see I did very little. <laughs> And at this point, I've already got my vertical balance. That was earlier in the video, and I guess I missed it. I should have pointed that out. And now I'm down to two post-it notes. <laughs> the weight of two post-it notes is all that needs to come off that opposite blade in order for it to be perfectly balanced and for me to be able to um, stamp it and be done with it not totally done because I still have to varnish it and I do get that question a lot if I varnish it if I balance it again and I don't this is the last balancing I'll do after I balance it here I just put it in in the what we call the oven and then the next you know day or two I'll take a big batch of them and, and spray them but I don't balance them again after that because as I get it perfectly, perfectly balanced, the little bit of spray is not going to make it enough off balance that you would ever notice. And the way you would notice if your prop is out of balance is it's going to give you an ugly vibration. So if you put a prop on and it just starts vibrating your plane and your engine, that's how you know that you're out of balance. Usually a rough running prop can be one of two things. It can be out of balance or it can the tracking can be off which means your tips aren't 
going through the same little so circle of air. And I got it balanced. Uh, the next thing I do is I st stamp the diameter and the pitch and I stamp the serial number and then it's all done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great weekend.